limit switch. Limit switch is a very important safety for our gas furnace. What this limit is going to be doing is protecting us from overheating and damaging our heat exchanger or even causing a fire. What we see on a limit switch is this side here. On this particular furnace, it's back behind our combination gas valve. It's kind of difficult to see, but this is all we get to see. Now, if we pull this out and look on the other side, this is what's between the heat exchanger. So think of a heat exchanger between each side and the airflow. This is in the airflow stream. So when these trip, they're getting too hot. So the heat exchanger is radiating too much heat. Most people, most students, their first thought is it's getting too hot. We have a problem with their fire. But in reality, if this is getting too hot and it's opening, it's a problem with airflow, airflow, airflow. That's what you have to remember. Now, we could have a dirty evaporator coil. We could have the blower on the wrong speed, dirty blower wheel, filter clogged up, return air uh, blocked with a couch, the supply air grill shut off, supplier ductwork crushed, on and on and on. Anything you can think of with airflow is the primary cause of this tripping. If they trip en enough times, they won't reset at all and you have to replace them. And also, if they get moisture on it, the evaporator coil is leaking, gets moisture in here and it causes these to rust out and fail. And also a house with a very high humidity can cause these to fail because the humidity is out of control and that moisture gets up in there. So let's talk about these limit switch. It's normally closed and it opens on temperature rise. So if we use our meter and disconnect the wires for ohms, we show here OL, infinite resistance. There's no path for electrons to flow. If we touch our meter together, we're seeing zero ohms resistance, the closed switch. So let's see what we are with this switch. We're gonna hold one on one side, one on the other, and our switch is showing zero. So this switch is closed. So let's see next what happens when we heat this switch up, and let's see if we can get this switch to open. And now we're showing OL. So OL on the meter says this switch is open. It got too hot. So that means we weren't pushing airflow across our heat exchangers. The heat stayed in that area, got too hot, and our limit uh, switch tripped. Most of these will have a control board, and that control board is going to say, hey, we have a problem with our limit. It does so many retries, and then it does what you call a soft lockout. That's going to make it where you have to open that door to reset the code. So you need to check the code before you take the doors off because it's gonna reset everything. This is gonna be telling us what's happening. This is our limit switch. Now there's many different styles of these. Here's one that's very similar, it's just closer together, different color material, but they probably have a complete different setting as far as what they limit at. Other styles we have, style like this, we have a long bimetal strip. This is the side that we would see, and this would be between the heat exchanger. And another style such as this, this style here just had a nice protective coating on it, but it was still essentially the same thing. The engineers have designed at what temperature this should trip at and exactly where this should be placed in the heat exchanger for the best safety. Now in the older days, we had limit switches such as this. We had different lengths of these. So you had smaller ones and longer ones, and you had to replace these with the exact same length. These were adjustable. Now, I want to make sure you call these by their proper name, which is a fan limit switch. I put a pause on purpose to make sure you understand that it's not just one component, it's two. This side is a fan switch, and on this side is a limit switch. For most gas furnaces, this side here was 24 volts, and this side is 120 volts. There was a little wire that came with the replacements that you had to break to make sure it separated this one from high voltage to low voltage, otherwise it's short entire system. Some of the oil furnaces had a high limit on the limit side. So you had one wire coming in and it powered the fan for the fan side and that same high voltage went and powered for the inducer for the, for the oil pump and everything for the furnace side. So it was a high voltage but it was still a fan limit switch. Now these are pretty well out of date but their concept of how they work is pretty cool. You have a bimetal wrapped around and when heated that bimetal starts to warp and as it warps it turns this dial. So the first one is actually for a fan off delay so it's it cycles it off. When we heat this up enough this is our marking point this switch here is going to come around this point and that's going to close this switch for our fan and if we don't have enough fan we're going to overheat and this third point will trip our limit. So we're going to do that one next. We're going to use a little bit more heat on this one. Now you can see that dial there, just starting to turn.
and you heard that click, now our fan would be on, so it'd be running the fan. But if we continue to heat this up, we'll get to where this third limit is over here, or that third point, that is our limit. That's gonna shut off our combination gas valve. So we heated up that little extra bit and we swung over, tripped our limit switch that would shut off the combination gas valve, stop the heat, the fan would stay on. So we're moving air across this to cool the heat exchanger and cool this limit back down. Now as we have time, as we go through time, this is going to cool off. Eventually our limit's going to cool off enough and you're going to hear a click. That's the limit switch closing again. So right now it's OL. As soon as we hear that next little click, this will go down to zero ohms of resistance. That click, we're down to zero ohms of resistance, and as it cools off, we'd have the fan running, this would cool off more. If we thermostat satisfied, we'd cool off to this point down here, and it would cycle the fan off. So fan, limit switch. So these are the older ones. They're a little bit out of date, but let's talk about another type of limit, and this is our flame rollout. Flame rollout is unique because it's a manual reset. You got a push button, and they're always located somewhere near the burners on the sides next to the burners, on the top next to the burners, many different locations. But if that flame is to roll out of the heat exchanger, this is the limit that trips for us. And it's very much the same way. It is normally closed, zero ohms, or it will open and we have OL. So let's check this one right now and see if we are open or closed. And this switch is OL, so it is stuck open. So let's press this little button and the button clicked, we'll check it again. Now we are zero ohms of resistance, so now it closed. So this trip was, this limit was tripped. Now if you were in a service call and this was tripped, you wouldn't just press that button and have them heating again, you need to find out why. Why did a flame roll out of that heat exchanger? This one will automatically reset. This one is a manual reset. You have to come out and physically press that. Make sure you know why, why did it trip? And when that furnace fires up, make sure you're standing to the side because that flame's gonna roll out towards your face. So you want to see what's causing this limit to trip because that's kind of a big deal. Here's an example of a limit we have a flame rollout and it took a little bit of time before this limit tripped and it charred these wires right here. So you want to make sure we know exactly why that flame's rolling out. This particular one we can see the bimetal. This one's inside of a casing. But you can simply on this one push that bimetal up and reset it. Now, sometimes they're wired in series to the limit. So the control board doesn't tell you exactly which one the problem is, but it's wired in series. In series means into, out of, into, out of. Here's some more. Most all of your rollouts are in series. Into, out of, into, out of, so on. But that is our limit switch. We always want to check and make sure they're protected. Now, we have one more kind of limit switch involved, and that limit switch is going to be our draft hood limit. And our draft hood limit is located up here on this side. Carrier was the one that was most commonly used these, but as our natural draft up, and this is an inducer fan motor, but it's still a natural draft exhaust, it requires, it relies on convection. If the flue pipe stopped up, it would actually push some of the combustion gases across this sensor. When that happened, this would trip, and it was also a manual reset. And there's also an auxiliary reset, uh, auxiliary limit that's located on the bottom of the blower, and uh, on the bottom of the blower, those were usually for horizontal installations, but if the temperature at the blower got too hot, it would cycle the furnace off as well. Those were set at a much lower temperature ratings. So limits, going to limit the operation. Anytime that limit switch, we're shutting off our combination gas valve. We're killing the 24 volts to this. We got our main limit back here, which is automatic reset. We have our flame rollouts on the sides and on the top, which are manual resets. We have our draft hood limit up here, which is also gonna be manual reset. And then we have sometimes auxiliary limits on the blowers. Those are automatic resets. We're gonna run this furnace under normal operation, and then we're going to shut off the fan motor and bypass the safety and see what happens to this heat exchanger when we do something that dangerous.
immediately when the heat exchanger ignites, so the furnace ignites, you can see the discoloration on the thermal imager, although just to the plain sight, there's no change whatsoever. Shortly the blower motor is going to come on and it will start to cool that heat exchanger off a bit. Now the blower motor is running, heat exchanger cools off a bit, we're moving the heat into the house. What we're going to do next is bypass the safety and I'm going to shut that fan off to see what happens to the heat exchanger when we overheat it. massive amount of heat building up especially in the bottom and some of the heat exchangers actually starting to discolor and we're getting a lot of soot coming out of the furnace itself so it's uh really overheating really bad this heat exchanger was already in poor shape because of the cracks on it and the uh with the primary heat exchanger but the secondary side it was already starting to leak so this heat exchanger is already bad to begin with now we can see the massive amount of heat building up here in our thermal imager. This furnace is overheating and it's just a matter of time. Now normally the limit switch would have failed, but we have it bypassed, which you should never ever do. Now we can see that the heat exchanger is actually starting to warp inside of there. So the tubes are starting to separate. They're actually starting to bend. The whole area is now overheating right here. And we have a lot of soot coming out of the combustion fan motor. So it's in really, really poor condition. Now the whole entire thermal imager here is we're really starting to just massive amounts of heat right there. So it's a very dangerous situation. It turns out that it got so hot that we lost our inducer fan. It's not pulling a proper vacuum to our pressure switch. System shut down and I think our limit switch have tripped also. We'll have to open it up to verify. We can see how it's definitely did a lot of damage to that heat exchanger. We're going to energize the fan to start cooling this back down. We have the fan motor running. We're cooling the heat exchanger back down. We can see how it's starting to cool off very rapidly. I don't know if it's gonna show up in the video, but there's massive decoloration on that uh, heat exchanger. The tubes have changed colors. It's uh, definitely in very bad shape. 
move the fan to high speed. We can see how it's cooled off much, much faster here. Still very, very hot. 